Instacart, the San Francisco-based grocery delivery comp company known for helping customers with their supermarket needs, is now on the stock market. The company's shares made their NASDAQ debut on Tuesday, closing up 12%. Instacart is one of the biggest venture-backed companies to go public in nearly two years. It says it has nearly 8 million active customers who spend about $320 per month on the platform. For more, Natalie Lung joins me now. She is a technology reporter for Bloomberg. Natalie, thank you for being here. So before we get to Instacart itself, there was a lot of talk about this initial public offering because it was, I believe, the fourth largest this year. And people were saying it suggested something about the market and companies being able to raise money in the markets. What were they talking about? Right. So kind of the companies coming into the public markets kind of show that um, companies are testing the waters, uh, whereas there was a bit of a drought in the U.S. public markets in the past two years. And Instacart delivers groceries, but one of the things that I was reading about is their ad revenue that they get. So people think this is just, um, you know, bringing the cornflakes to the house, but it's actually something else is going on. What is that ad business? Yeah, so a th about a third of their revenue is uh, coming from advertising. So similar to how Facebook and Instagram is able to target uh, users with ads. So Insta Instacart has a very a uh, highly intentional grocery shopping audience. And so they can convince brands like their investor Pepsi to be able to uh, target, you know, cola lovers um, to, you know, sell those ads on their platforms. Is this a way to think about technology companies in the current economy, which is they may do one thing over here, but really it's all about the information economy, that, that the delivery of food is really just a way to get your information so they can then match that up with with product suppliers and make a lot of money that way. Right. From the business perspective, delivery is a lower margin business. Um, labor is a high cost. And so the higher, what brings the higher margins is really advertising. And Insta Instacart, was <laughs> there so many Instas? Um, Instacart yeah. was a company that thrived during the pandemic. What is its, what is its health now in the post-pandemic uh, economy? And what does that tell us about maybe whether our shopping patterns have changed, our behavior has changed for good now that the pandemic has left its main phase. Yeah, it's definitely a bellwether to look at. Um, people are definitely going back to stores a lot more now and maybe some opting for click and collect options. So it's time will tell how consumer uh, patterns would change. And how many people are using um, uh, Instacart? I mean, it got a lot of attention and then those people who are online know all about it. But sometimes we get lost in the things that are attention grabbers and forget there's a huge world out there of people not buying. So how many people were using Insta Instacart? Um, on general, like around 12% of grocery shopping is done online uh, in the U.S. And so um, what they're saying, the potential there uh, to serve some of more of that market, $1 trillion market uh, in the U.S. And what's the next hurdle for Instacart? I noticed that, that it had a big, strong opening and then it went down a little. What are the concerns since people are looking at this? as a bellwether, both for the way people shop, but also for initial public offerings. What's the next hurdle for Instacart to see if it meets what Wall Street or what Na the NASDAQ wants from it? Yeah, so it needs to be able to prove that it can grow its uh, user base and uh, order volumes so that uh, it can attract more advertisers. Great. Natalie Lung, technology reporter for Bloomberg. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you.